Okay, we have learned how to write basic functions, and one of the reasons we said for writing functions is that these will be code that you could use over and over again. For instance, why wouldn't you want to always be using a lovely message like what I've drawn here for Physics 1600? Well, that's true, but this code is stuck in this particular source file. What we need to do to make it portable and use, usable is to create our own library. For instance, up here, there are a number of libraries. Libraries consist of two things, a header file and a source file. When you do the include statement, you're just giving the list of function prototypes, essentially. You still need the source file to explain what those functions do. So what we want to do is create another library, like configureuart.h, that we can use for whatever we want. And I just noticed that configure you art should be capitalized here. Okay, so how do we go about creating our library? Well, it needs a header file and it needs a source file. A header file is dot h, a source file is dot c. And to be a library, they have to have the same name. So we're going to create a header file and we're going to say a new item and we're going to call it new header file and we want to give it a name so I'm going to call it my library right. I can't spell library very well okay my library and it's just going to go in the same directory as first. But we could move it. For instance, I've, most of the libraries I give you, I put them in common so that you can access them more easily. And we could do that as well. But for now, I'm just leaving them in this directory because they're not very useful files that I'm creating. So we'll finish that. Okay, and up here, it's created a, vi a great deal of information. Great stuff. We don't need any of it. So I'm going to go up all the way and delete it. Okay. So what goes into my header file? Well, what goes into my header file is something very simple. For the most part, all you put in a header file is the one information the compiler needs to decipher what your code is. And that's simply the function prototypes. So control X, and cut them from there, and posted them here. Okay, so here I have the two function prototypes that are in my library. That's essentially all that a header file needs function prototypes. There's more stuff you can put in, but basically that's all we're interested in doing, putting in the function prototypes. Going back to this function, I now have to include that library. So here I now have my library dot h. I spelled it right. I hope. Okay, so that's the header file, but we also need the source file. So we're going to create a new c file here, and just a c source file. And it's got to have the same name, right? my library, as the header file. And we're putting it in the same place. Okay, and what we do is we go to 
user functions.c and we cut the code for the functions from there and in my library.c I paste them here. Okay. okay. That's almost everything. Except when you write a source file with functions in them, you always need the function prototypes. So up at the top here, I need to do number include my library dot h. My library dot h. So that's got all the function prototypes for P1600 message and some series. That's where they're set up for the program. So it's telling the compiler that everything is copacetic. Everything's matching up. OK. Now, if I compile this, there's one other problem for me. Okay? This program here uses printf, and printf is not in this file, it's in the standard C library. So if I'm going to use a function in here, I've got to make sure I tell that to the compiler. I could reference other library files that I use as well, right? So you know, I could have lots and lots of functions in here that are in other libraries. The compiler figures out where everything is before it builds the program. And that should be it. I now should have a, a working project of multiple files that I've created using my new library. So let's see what happens when I compile it. Keep your fingers crossed. Build successful. That's great to see. It's launching, going to the simulator, and let's look at the output. Yeah, it worked. Nice, simple, straightforward. So again, it's easy to build functions, and if you build functions, it's straightforward to make libraries of reusable code simply put all the function prototypes in a header file, put all the function code in a source file. The header and the source file need to have the same name. In your source file, you must call the header file for the library as well. Any other functions you use have to be referenced via the include statements. That's it. That's how simple it is to make libraries. We'll be getting to you to make some. Now, generally, when you make a library, the whole purpose is to have a group of related functions together. These functions are not related. They're just done here as an example. For instance, the math.h library has all those math functions. It's a good place to keep them all together. We'll see other C libraries as well, right? and they're all related functions. So normally you try to organize them so that they're on the same theme or topic. Thanks for now.